Well, good morning everybody. I am in Macclesfield on a incredibly muggy day and I'm here to find the Ian Curtis Memorial Stone and his kind of grave and tell you a bit about him. One of my favourite performers ever, one of my favourite bands ever. So I hope you enjoy. I've never been to Macclesfield, but it's nothing like I expected. It's nowhere near Manchester. It's quite leafy and rural. Who would have thought any of these things? And the grave's quite big. But I know he's just down here. cemetery but it's insanely quiet so it makes me want to talk even quieter and I already talk quite quiet <laughs> get a chance we're going to go to his house look how like that's not a rock star's house is it and think how big he is and it's like he's the working class rock star he stayed working class um he had lots of flaws lots of illnesses it's added to his flaws but he was a genius and very talented and he's a huge mess <laughs> of EPs and their first album Unknown Pleasure I'm sure is 1979 and how close is 1980 and you would think he's in a band that's going places he's married he's got a kid now but in 1978 he started to have seizures um, as a result of epilepsy and they were quite violent seizures and he was medicated for this but for the rest of his life the last two years of his life just sound very miserable with his health and he started to really struggle um, the medication he was, he was on subsequently people have questioned whether he should have been on it and the medication added well the medication caused very dramatic mood swings he was advised to stop drinking and smoking, but he didn't, and his health quickly declined from 1978. After having seizures, he started to implement a very unique dancing style, very iconic now. And it was kind of his way of um, visually representing what his seizures were and what they felt like and he would kind of dance like he was having a fit like he was having a seizure and it's very unusual become very iconic and it was a part of his stage presence he was called very awkward with his stage presence i always thought he was very unique very different and that the, the important thing to be very different if he was into massively into david bowie isn't that like the one thing david bowie promoted was being unique so that was i think just his stab at being different um 
1979, he started an affair with a Belgian journalist. The name totally escapes me. But this would obviously cause huge marital issues and it was just adding to the um, very almost chaotic life he had for someone that seemed quite a quiet person. He, uh, his life was spiralling very quickly and he is a, a very, very young man. It said his seizures were getting worse the more successful Joy Division were becoming and the more that was expected of Ian Curtis, the more he had to record the worse his seizures were getting and the worse his moods were getting. In April of 1979, his daughter was born. There's a lot of life that happened to this man. He very famously died at 23, but there's a lot going on, isn't there? And all these, uh, from like 1977 to 1980, a lot happens. Um, it said because of his epilepsy and his seizures, he was very rarely able to hold his daughter for very long for fear that he would drop her. So by the time, by the time Closer came around, the recording for Closer, his seizures were said to be incredibly severe and he really struggled during the recording of it. Closer is one of my favourite albums ever. I think Unknown Pleasures seems to be their classic album, but I think it might be because of the cover it has become very iconic. But if you don't know much about him, Closer is where I would start. And if you look for this memorial stone, Car Park Memorial Stone, he's just here on the left. During the recording of Closer, Peter Hook went into the bathroom to try and find Ian Curtis and he found, found him unconscious on the bathroom floor. He'd banged his head after a seizure. They were doing a gig for, I can't remember why, that's the Unknown Pleasures uh, album cover. They were doing a gig in Finsbury Park and somebody turned strobe lighting on. He kind of fell backwards and needed to stop. And later that night they played another um, gig and he had a huge seizure, his worst one. and. It was all just getting a bit too much for Ian Curtis and the success of the band and his health just couldn't align. Um, at the last ever gig in Birmingham, they performed the song Ceremony, which would end up being a debut single for a band called New Order. And I hate just being in one place telling you a story. I find it really awkward. Um, so on the 6th of April 1980 he tried to commit suicide for the first time. He was recuperating in I think it was Tony Wilson's house um, and he wrote lots of letters to the Belgian journalist declaring his love for her. So just six weeks after that on the 17th of May of 1980 he was speaking to Bernard Sumner the member of Joy Division who would go on to be New Order and he was saying he needed to speak to his wife that night. Um, the band were going to Manchester the day after and he said he would get his train at 10 o'clock in the morning and meet the band at Manchester Airport to fly off to America to do the first ever North American tour. A tour he was dreading because he hated flying and he thought the American audience would just mock his performance. He was, uh, Deborah Curtis's widow wrote a book, um, Touching from a Distance, I can't remember the name of the book, I'll put a picture up. I read it as a teenager 
it's very good and you learn a lot about Ian Curtis in it and he did sound quite hard to live with but he was also painted that he was really suffering and he was it sounds like he was in a lot of pain in this world um, when his wife came over on the 17th of May mm. to drop the divorce proceedings and Deborah was worried about Ian Curtis. I mean, it's just six weeks since he tried to kill himself. And she asked if he wanted her to stay. She went to the parents' house to say, I'm staying with Ian. When she came back, Ian was, Ian Curtis was fine. Or a lot better. And he wanted to spend the night by himself. But on that morning, but on that morning of the 18th of May, 1980, whilst listening to The Idiot by Iggy Pop, which is an absolutely amazing album, if you've never heard it, he took a washing line and he hung himself. And his wife would find him the next day. Uh, Ian Curtis was meant to go to America the next morning with Joy Division. Um, he was very uncomfortable about this tour. He didn't want to fly. He wanted the band to sail. Um, sail, not fail. And he was worried about how the American audience would react to him. Um, Deborah Curtis, he left a suicide note. He took the pictures down of his daughter and his wife and they were laying in front of him whilst he hung himself. Um, they think to write his suicide note, he got the pictures out and wanted to write from looking at the pictures. It's all incredibly tragic. Um, Deborah said he had said many times he didn't want to live past his early 20s and he said many times that his health would kill him and that he didn't want to live with this condition um yeah so that's it really choice of not go on to become new order one of the biggest bands britain ever produced and ian curtis goes down as a legend They are, they are one of my favourite bands ever, they just, I tend to like those kind of very easy to understand music. Um, the Beatles, a couple of chords, best music ever, Joy Division, similar, a couple of chords, really insane lyrics, really insane music, um, really one of the best bands ever, you've never listened to Joy Division, there's so much, Love Will Tear Us Apart is one of the greatest songs ever, Atmosphere, one of the great songs ever. Um, track one off Closer. Is it Atrocity Expedition? It's one of my favourite songs ever. Um, but a really great band and I do recommend. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you like and subscribe. You've never seen me get back to my car. But here I am. Have a great day.